Tonight on Bad Lad's Army, the staff turn up the pressure. There's a thief discovered in the ranks. Liars, thieves and cheats. I cannot stand them. Ah! No one! Ah! And Private Kiprianu gets trashed. <laughs> that is what the people think of you. Three weeks of basic training has begun to sort the men from the boys. Four! Five! Get over this camp! Get away! So far, a total of six lads couldn't hack it. Another one bites us! Woo! Another one's gone! Another one's gone! Another one bites us! Woo! The rest are beginning to look like real soldiers. Come on, get in there! Go! Get bloody move in! Go! But not everyone. Private Kiprianu has been accused of malingering. <laughs> His comedy limp has become a platoon joke. This morning, Captain Dodds is in a liverish mood. Why are you not with them? Davis, why don't you have your belt on? Just, what do you think just this is? Weaver, Zedakis, come here. The four of you will be doing extra fatigues today. Only ten days to go before the final passing out parade and both the lads and their billets are a mess. A stickler for standards, Captain Dodds calls a snap inspection. You can smell that they haven't been done. The ablutions are heaving. Right, there's one lavatory seat that's broken here. Son Ray. Son Edwards. Get out of the way. Get out of the way! Get out of the bloody way! Look at that shit! Do you masturbate into your cup? No, Corporal. Because it's in the bottom there and it's all sticky and it's all horrible, isn't it? And it really should have. And there's a little hairy thing in there as well. Can you see that? Corporal. What would you do with this mug if you were me? And dirt there. You'd do what? Oh, I'd just go and rinse it. You'd go and rinse it? And make it clean, Corporal. OK, that's cool. <laughs> go and rinse it and make it clean, then. Turn! Turn! Thank you, Corporal Nikas. Right. right, listen in. On the room inspection, you failed the ablution blocks are in rag order. I hate idleness. And that is not good enough. Now get away! Devil! Devil! Piss off! The corporals decide to teach the lads a lesson. Sleep in that shit tonight. Oh. 
I mean, it's yeah, jail for like paradise. Yeah. yeah. It's like being on a paradise beach yeah. being in jail to compared to here, mate. I'd rather, I'd rather go to prison. If anyone got sentenced to this, they wouldn't last. <laughs> that's what that's. I said, yeah, they'd be stuck here, so they You should send bad lads to places like this rather than sending them to True. prison. I'll change yeah. more lads a month, than I'd say, I'd say a month prison. here is worse, worse than doing a year in prison. Yeah. You, a year in prison would be easier than doing a month here. That, right, that, right, that, right, that. Well, go in, turn, with the thoughts. Left, turn. On the drill square, Sergeant Ray is determined to crush the lad's sloppy attitude. Surprise, surprise, it's Kiprianu who catches his eye. Don't look at you! Look at me! What do you think has just been done? I don't know, Sergeant Ray. The movement is being taught. Everything is being explained. And you still continue to look around. You're idle. That rifle is wavering around. You're standing like a bloody girl guide, as if you stood at a bloody bar. Whatever, I have had a blood enough. Now get out, get away, just piss off. Get away, disappear, Kipriano, Kipriano. Don't stand in there, because you're just a pile of bloody crap. Waste, total bloody space. Come to attention! Turn to your right! And get over here! Move yourselves! Move yourselves! To the right hand side of the hangar! After drill, Private Butler adds insult to injury. Listen in! What do you call me? Sarge Ray. You didn't. You call me Sarge. Sorry. Sarge? American. Bloody Sarge! Let me tell you one thing, Butler, there are only two sergeants in this man's army, and one is a massage, and the other's a bloody sausage! And if you massage the sausage, you are calling me a wanker! It's Sant, S-A-R-N-T, short for sergeant. Don't ever call a senior NCO a wanker. Understand? Yes, sir. Right, I want this lot put in an athlete. Up against the wall. You got the block on this car. The weekly supply truck is overflowing with life's little luxuries, from bog paper to beer. It's a prime opportunity to pilfer. Will these bad lads succumb like so many national servicemen before them? You meet a lot of thieves, vagabonds. You had like some sharps, all the London guys, they say, yeah, well, I can get you like whatever you want. We can get like electric shavers for about three quid. You want one? Oh, yeah. So the next day they come in with about a dozen and they'd be flogging it to all the guys in the barrack room, you know. A lot of flogging went on. I could have flogged an anvil because I was in the blacksmith shop, but I didn't. Couldn't lift it for a start. Up in the truck, Private Harkin has been ordered to ensure the supplies reach the Naffy unmolested. But he's sorely tempted by the luxuries on offer. The lads are unaware that Corporal Murray is conducting a stock check. Several items have gone AWOL. The men are sick of their 1950s diet, so Corporal Murray decides to catch his thief by using a bucket of piping hot stew as bait. I went out my way to get you food, because I thought they deserved it. However, some people unloaded stuff for the naffy tonight, didn't they? Yes, yeah, that's Corporal. Cool. Right. The loaf of bread that went missing from the cookhouse. The packet of tobacco, the cigarette rolling papers, the Mars bar, which has just been done a stock check, and the naffy are missing. You're going to get one chance at this, and one chance only. If the stuff doesn't arrive here, in front of me, you don't get that food. And it's good food. Sausages, onions, nice and hot, apples, bread. 
Old habits die young. If they don't own up, you don't get fed. And the platoon won't get fed because you didn't have the moral courage to hand it back in. Line up in one single line. Those of you that did it, go and get it. <laughs> Who touched the food? Everyone that knows is loaded. And listen, you know, you know we was too the bread. So whoever took it, just get it. Simple as that. We're all hungry. Everyone stay here, we'll do a locker search. What? Is it? Quickly out of time, lads. As if by magic, Michael Blackham finds the loaf of bread lurking in a bed of nettles. What's left, Corporal? Tobacco and the rolling pin. To 60 seconds, But there's still no sign of the chocolate bar or cigarettes. Basically, right, they know who the f took it, so just don't be a f pussy and own up to it. Sneaky f bastard. Right, everyone's starving, man. Come on. Be a man. They're going to get caught anyway. You might as well hang up. I don't care if I have the name on a bit of paper. Slip to me. But I know who done it. <laughs> Chris Harkin, the man responsible for the supplies, reappears from the billet, clutching a bar of chocolate. Who took this? Me. Right. You have the moral courage to own up. You'll be on jankers in the morning, do you understand? Yes. With only one item unaccounted for, Murray relents and feeds the men. Gentlemen, line up. Line up! Oh. 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 Get up and pour that in. You got burger? Yeah. But if they think Murray has forgotten about the missing cigarettes, they have another thing coming. Attention! Rennie gets all hung up on the assault course. Harkin. Yes, sir. And the Inquisition continues. Harkin, look me in the eye. Look me right in the eye. Did you steal anything? No, sir. Put yourselves in a sitting position with your backs against the wall. Sitting position. With the cigarettes still missing, Corporal Niokas conducts an honesty parade. Have you yet discussed why I am in such a filthy, stinking mood. Liars, thieves and cheats. I cannot stand them. It leads to other oh, things. You've got to be taking the piss. I am not taking the piss. I am not taking the piss. Pick it up and do a lap of the square now holding it. Go, go, quickly. On the edge. Capriano, get on your belly. Crawl out to the ammunition box. Get it to the other side of the square. Uh, yeah, on. you're not that much of a f soldier. Uh, we will keep doing this until Capriano gets our ammunition box. Come on! Come on! Stay on your back. Kip by name, Kip by nature. Raise! Uh, Pass that to the next person. Uh, <laughs> Capriano has been in that position for the last three minutes, just laying there, resting. I told him, get laid down. Lower. Everybody look at the progress he's made. Tell you what, Capriano, I wouldn't like you in your shoes when you get back in that room. Even though the lads have been beasted, the thief still refuses to come forward. That evening, the lads decide to take matters into their own hands. It's him. I'm telling you. I reckon it's him. Chris Harkin is the prime suspect. Well, I should will be straight with you. People are saying it's either you or Carl. Did you take it, did you not? No. You didn't honestly, take it? You honestly didn't take it. Great, they never got Fair enough. Well, look at his face. He's bright red. He knows he's been stealing. Bit. Who said they seen him? Who said they seen him? Just be a man. someone that was working with him see him take it. Someone from our section? Yeah. Car. Yeah. Car. Car. The Inquisition targets Car. There's a rumour he witnessed Harkin stealing. But bad lads don't grass. Well, back you up 100%. Who's in it? Who did you see take it? Is it Lowell's? No. Who? Saying that you're not being the grass. 
at the end of the day, these Stop boys, these boys are going to be on Jankers. You're, you're going to be on Jankers. Yeah, the week you've one. You've got to tell us. Yeah, if Irish. I end up on Jankers, I'll take it out on you. Try take it. The lad's nickname for Harkin is Irish. Have you seen Irish take it? I thought I did, yeah. Back home in Derry, Harkin has a history of taking without consent. It's very hard-headed, short-tempered. The most major incident was the, the one with the Audi car. Oh, I remember Mickey's car. <laughs> he went out to get cigarettes, decided he was going to try and start it up. Don't really drive, like, by the when I was on the car, I was really, really drunk, you know. <laughs> car started on gear, jumped forward. Put it through the gable end of a house. I had to get cut out. We didn't have the money to pay off the fine. So I talked them on to Young Offender Centre for a few days to pay it off. People on there were pretty sound, like, but uh, there was ones that were serious, you know. They were all on for a couple of years and things that got there, you know. But wouldn't like to be here again, you know. Harkin has been sent to Coventry by the platoon. And Carr seems to have overcome his inhibitions about grassing. The only other person that was anywhere near that tobacco was um, Harkins, definitely, enough for a fact. There's no way that anyone else could have took that tobacco, and I witnessed him, I saw him in my own eyes take on cigarettes, definitely. Could they have not been Harkins that he bought previously? I saw him, I saw him pick up them fags. You know that something has happened that will greatly affect the platoon, not just this section. If I don't get any messages back my way, end of training today, there is going to be a blooming atom bomb go off in this camp. Right. As the lads prepare for Captain Dodd's inspection, they discover a smoking gun in Harkin's locker. That's a brand new roll, isn't it? What do you that? Morning, Cipriani. Morning, sir. Why well, have you got your shoe polish on your sheet? Look at it. I have no excuse, okay, sir. OK, look at it. I have no excuse, sir. Get it sorted out. Two two five two nine six four eight. Private Harkin, sir. Morning, Harkin. Good morning, sir. Do that top button up now. Yes, sir. Sergeant Ray takes the opportunity to confront Harkin, Harkin. directly. Yes, sir. I hear some stories. Harkin, look me in the eye. Look me right in the eye. Did you steal anything? No, Sergeant Ray. You did not? No, Sergeant Ray. You didn't steal any tobacco? No, Sergeant Ray. Okay. we we'll see you later, Harkin. Yes, sir. We are absolutely adamant that you did not steal. Think about it. Yes, sir. You didn't steal anything else? No, sir. All right. Corporal Niokas musters the platoon outside. The thieving bit is done. Now we're into the lying and cheating phase. Just imagine that these cigarettes are ammunition. Somebody in this platoon has got more than their fair share and is not owning up to it. You could die in battle because you have a liar, a cheat and a thief amongst you. Fall out! If the thief does not come forward, the whole platoon will face the wrath of the Provo Sergeant. With the ranks about to dob him in... Oh, we've got an answer OK, give it to him. Parking runs out of options. What? I took a cigarette. Can't hear you. I took a cigarette. I can't hear you. Speak up. I took the cigarettes, Corporal. Why? Because I've no answer, Corporal. Why? I've no answer, Corporal! What about the tobacco? I didn't touch the tobacco, Corporal. But you took the cigarettes? Just the cigarettes, Corporal. You stole them? Yes, Corporal. Why did you steal them? Because the tobacco was giving me a sore throat, Corporal. You were only paid a couple of days ago. Yes, Corporal. So you're an opportunistic thief, are you? You are untrustworthy. Get fell into the lesson whilst I discuss it with Sergeant Ray. You are a piece of shit, Harkin. Yes, Corporal. 
today, the obstacle course will sort the men from the boys. With rivalry building between the two sections, the corporal's pride is at stake. Teamwork. Get that factor into your head today. Team work. I don't care how it happens. Get over. Some of the lads are literally pissing themselves. What's the problem? I'm scared of heights, Corporal. Right, I'm scared of heights. Right, get up there, don't think about it, and just go for it. Stand by! With all the bigger lads, Corporal Murray's section is confident of victory. Let's they let's power go. into the lead. Right, get up there! Corporal Myokes' section are having to carry Kipriani over every obstacle. Then disaster strikes Murray's section. An exhausted Rennie becomes entangled in his rifle sling. Help him! Help him! Help him! Both teams cross the line neck and neck. 11.57. Rennie, stand up! Stand up! Stand him up! Come on, sort him out! Stand him up! Suck it all in, Rennie! Suck it all in! The results! The winners of a time with 12 minutes, one section! I want what you give me today, right? That's what I want. That is what I want. Got it? Yes, yes go, bro. Bro. That is effort. I take him and go. Two section may have lost, but at least they have gained Corporal Murray's respect. Cigarette thief Harkin is up on a charge. Good morning, sir. Private morning, Harkin. Sir. Thank you, Sam Ray. Private Harkin, I am frankly disappointed to see you here on these charges. Harkin, you must understand that theft is not acceptable. Yes, sir. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I wasn't thinking at the time, sir. Speak up, Harkin. I wasn't thinking at the time, sir. I know, you're acting on instinct. Yes, sir. And if you have the opportunity to steal again, what will you do? Not steal, sir. Not steal. Good, Harkin. I'm going to fine you four times the value of the goods you stole. So that's two shillings. Yes, sir. I'm also going to sentence you to a period in jail starting now and concluding tomorrow morning. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Sir? Thanks, Henri. Carry Mr. on, please. Carry on, sir, please. Carry on, please. Soldier under sentence, sir. Good morning, sir. Don't feast. Yes, sir. Okay? You know what happens to people as they're feeding, don't you? Yes, sir. What? They get punished, sir. They get punished. Either by us, or if you get caught in the blocks doing it, what happens then? By your mates. You up, your career up. Don't get caught. Good advice, that. Germany had the Gestapo, we had the staff sergeants. All barracks, or all army barracks, had their own guard room. And that was where basically they had one or two cells. These guys would disappear for two weeks, three weeks, a month, and they'd come back incredibly fit, not talking very much about what happened to them. Straight in, Arkin! With Harkin under sentence, all his belongings are taken to the guardhouse. Do not talk to anybody. You're very lucky you're not going out the gate, aren't you? Yes, sir. Like some other pieces of shit we've had. But the biggest punishment for Harkin is the loss of his peers' respect. Everyone stole something in their life, everyone's done it. It's the fact that he, he nearly let us not eat last night. He, he nearly let us all not eat, and, and, he's, and he was going to let us all get punished today. And it's, it's just not on, and I don't think no one's going to forgive him. Well, I, me personally, I ain't going to talk to him again. I've had enough. I haven't got any respect for him for that.
Kiprianu manages a personal worst. Taking a test to carry it, you just piece of shit. And the lads turn on him. Heaven help us. Somewhere along the line, the platoon commander believe that somewhere within you, you show the signs and qualities of leadership. Some of you... During basic training, the most promising national servicemen were singled out for officer selection. What is greatly sad and frustrating is that one day I may well be calling you sir. <laughs> Despite their shady pasts, a handful of lads might make the grade. You have. You show potential. Show They'll be interviewed by Captain Dodds. An officer tends to glide along, uh, and the sergeant major says, They're fine, they move self to air. And, and the officer says, uh, Form the men up, chaps. Sergeant major, form the men up. It's a, a totally different attitude to the whole thing. Carry on, Sergeant. Very good, sir. Oh, yeah, Pam! That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right! But most of them were just nasty little insecure public school boys who were determined somehow or other to establish that they were the boss and were really pretty worthless. Um, I eventually became one of them myself. Uh, good morning, Father Ellis. Sit down. Thank you. With only bad lads to choose from, Captain Dodds has got his work cut out. You have a 2 1 degree in sociology from University of Greenwich, yes, is that sir. correct? So it's a second rate degree from a second rate university? Yes, sir. Fair enough. Are you patriotic? Um, not really, no, sir. And I'm straight. <laughs> Just can tell you no, that's sure. I'm proud to be British. I will defend my country to the death. So what do you believe in if you don't believe in Queen and country? Not much, really. Are you a pacifist, Chapter? Um, I have to be totally honest. I mean, I've heard that word before, but um, could you explain it? Sorry? OK, do you, do you believe that wars are essentially evil and that the only way for societies to run is through peaceful means? To be honest, 100% honest, I could never they pull the trigger and actually um, on a battlefield and kill someone. But pacifist Robert Shuttler's pass form suggests a familiarity with weapons. One of the worst things I've done, I can remember once I was uh, playing around with an air rifle near a golf course. And he's aimed for this bloke, just uh, up on the green. I didn't attempt to, but I somehow managed to uh, shoot a golfer. No word of a lie, he's hit him in the nuts, yeah. The geese go, oh, drop down to the floor, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I ran for my life. Lucky didn't get caught. Quality, quality, once in a lifetime sort of thing. Though. But I must say, um, I'm not too happy with that. Not proud of that at all, no. Corporal Murray has placed Dozy Robert Shuttler in charge of two section. During basic training, potential officers must display the ability to take responsibility for others. A message to you from Corporal Murray. Yeah. To Private Shuttler, inspect the billet in two section. I am watching. Get them on parade. You miss something, you will suffer. <laughs> Corporal Murray. Get me, my Shuttler! I am watching! Robert Shuttler embraces a laid-back style of management. Cool, Murray might say something about rolling up socks. <coughs> Other than that, a good turnout. What I want to do is I want to see if he picks anybody up. Because I know and he knows that it isn't perfect at the moment. Luckily for Shuttler, the lads are happy to point out each other's failings. Fucking rifle, Seriously, that's a rifle. Sorry, Dennis, can I put that down? Yeah. Just put rust on brass on the belt. Okay. Excuse me. His jacket's not tucked into his belt. 
He's not done up at the top. Of course. Bastard. Shot lock. Yeah. Do you want me to see a rifle run? All right, the rest of you, round the block with your rifles. <laughs> no, do me for missing cut. Let's go. His management style works so well that some of the lads decide to punish themselves. Nobody wants to do it. Go on, Davis, do it for Shutler. I run around backwards. After all, a beasting from Private Shutler has to be better than a thrashing from Corporal Murray. No, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Do we go? Bastard! Will you have missing buttons again, Davis? Bastard! No! Bastard! 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 That's Sir uh, Shipwright! Bastard! Bastard! Get back in private. That's it, overall, lads. That was a good inspection. Shades of Sergeant One Wilson section. from Dad's Army, perhaps. But at least something from Corporal Murray has rubbed off on him. I'm turning up the heat. Yeah, I'm turning on the screw. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good I'm enough, gents. In <laughs> Over in Corporal Nyokas' section, David Butler is in charge. Scared of crossing the boys, he decides to do everything himself. Stand by base. Everyone, grand The lads are not impressed by his matronly attitude. Butler has already started to lose the respect of his section. By nightfall, he has lost all control. I haven't even done anything yet. I've just come in, told them what they've said, and they already dislike me. They're already turned against me. Burns, he's got a notepad and book, and he thinks he's like Charlie Chaplin, like he thinks he's Charlie, and he's walking around like he's a leader, and he ain't no leader because he can't tell me what to do. Because I just, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't do the do. I know a girl that's a scoop of data. She gives it a sixty-nine. I'd rather disappoint the officers and keep my friends in here, and I'd rather keep these boys happy than keep them happy because that's all I want to do for the next twelve days before I go. Get in now. Move! Shut Morning Push inspection, and Corporal Nyokis is the ultimate judge of Butler's tenure as a potential officer. Where's your tie? Come on, Corporal. So why is Moynihan's tie hanging out? Ooh yeah! Oh! Where are we going with this? Would never have been noticed if you had to check the locker layout. Oh, would have been rectified if you had to check the locker layout. But you haven't checked it, have you? What you've done is sod all. What's that? Hair, cool. And why is it on your bed? Oh, Jesus, what kind of hair is it? Don't know. Cool. What are you laughing at? Do I look like the sort of person that should be subjected to walking around picking up people's pubic hairs off the bed because they can't be asked to clean them? Just hanging there. Have you shaved this morning? Yes, Corporal. You seriously think this soldier has shaved? I've stood there and watched him. Because all that's coming out of your mouth is complete crap. You've screwed up. Your section has screwed up. You're in charge. Can I punish him later? What are you asking me for? You're in charge. OK, everyone outside. You're the potential Close officer. Your lockers. You're the one that's going to be an officer. So do officer stuff. Do officer stuff. Everybody outside, close your lockers. Right. Man, it's just a bit disappointing. I did feel a bit emotional this morning. And, you know, unfortunately, I let it out, and I didn't mean to. I was trying to hold it back, but I felt like people in my group actually stitched me up a bit myself because I thought like, I was trying to help them out, and in the end, they've, you know, kicked me up the ass a bit. Stand up your knees, stand easy. Town! As you were. Town! Mugabe Town! Shan! Right. I'm now going to introduce you to a platoon task. Because so far, all you've done is little games. From here, you'll go to the farm with your ammunition. 
And it's imperative that you get there within 15 minutes from point A to point B. As a platoon, not strung out like ill-disciplined rabble that you are. Why are you looking around, Cipriano? Everyone down five press-ups, go for Cipriano. This is obviously too much for Cipriano to take in. On your feet up. Does everyone here understand the task? Stand by, let's go. The platoon must finish the two mile run on time and together. If they fail, the exercise will be repeated. Get back then, close them up. The four ammunition boxes weigh 40 pounds each. But Private Kipriyanu weighs 180. Even though there's nothing medically wrong with him, the rest of the lads take the strain. If he can't do it, you carry him! Take it in turns to carry him! Useless piece of shit! Why can not some of you run down here in 15 minutes? Kipriano. I would not waste my rations on that man at the moment. I would rather give them to the shagging enemy than give them to him. You know he's the weakest link. Because of Kipriyanu, the platoon failed to meet their deadline. They have to do the whole thing again. It's a turning point for the lads. They've had enough. Hey, we're not carrying you, Kipriyanu. We're going to run it out, bruv. We're going to run it out. Fucking oh, carrying you, fucking carrying you, bruv. We're going to carrying you. Wait, bruv, I'm going to fuck you up. Kip, bruv, put some fucking effort in, all right? Fuck me up. We've got that back in 20 minutes. Who are you talking to? Kip, 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 Kip. See, you got... Kip, shut up. You are not worthy enough of being a fucking soldier. You do not go off to your fellow men, do you understand? Come on, lads, dig in. Come on, dig in. Come on, push it now. Things soon come to blows. Come on! Push yourself! Come on. Back in the billets, the rumbling continues. He's fucking it up for himself. And he's letting us down by doing it. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just playing on it because he's getting away with it now. And how old is he? He's 24, man. Sounds like a fucking 16 year old sometimes. Someone get that fucking crippled dress. Back in the days of national service, they had their own ways of dealing with men like Kipriyanu. If one guy is, uh, like, doing something wrong, what they do, they punish the old room. You all get onto this guy and we'd sling him in the shower and, like, get an old cold hose pipe and bleed him and chill him down with a cold hose pipe or something like that. After you had one dose of that, I mean, most of the guys conformed. We have to do something. If you're a golden, I'm fucking... Even them. if we stop talking to him, put him in a cold shower, say, you know what I mean? Hide him somewhere and fucking sort of bastard out, because that's the only way it's going to work. Fucking if they're not going to do it anymore, they're going to yeah. make us do it. Or they're going to beast us until we make them do it. I think he's pull his finger out his ass and start doing something. I haven't been doing as much as I could be doing, but, but I've been doing more, much, much more than what I would have normally been doing. Much, much more. And for, for me, that's difficult for me. Because I don't usually do that much. Uh, it's got to the stage where people are starting to get slightly annoyed and I am a little bit worried that things might happen. All right. For the sake of everyone's sanity, John Kiprianu is ordered out of the billet to camp outside on the lawn. They really do not understand that I'm giving 100%. They think it's just laziness. All right, some, some parts are laziness. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. But... I am so much more unfitter than everyone else, and I really am trying my best. After a day from hell, John Kiprianu beds down for a night under the stars. A few hours respite from the lads and staff. Harkin cleans up his act. Nasty pieces of shit! Like you! And Kiprianu finds himself in a mess. Again. <laughs> that is what fucking people think of you. <laughs> Come on, scrub it! Cigarette thief Harkin is doing his bird. For 24 hours, he's the provost sergeant's plaything. 
doubling everywhere. You want to play soldiers? I'll play soldiers, laddie. Come on, get your bloody hands down there. Get in it. That's it, underneath the ring. That's where it hides. All the dirt, the germs. Nasty pieces of shit. Like you. Forward. Left foot, 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 left foot. You horrible person. But time. Come on. Run ragged from dawn to dusk, the end of Harkin's short, sharp shock comes not a minute too soon. Two, two, five, three, nine, six, four, eight, Private Harkin, Sergeant. Any requests? No, Sergeant. Any complaints? No, Sergeant. I think you'll make a good soldier. Just don't do things that comes naturally to you. Yes, Sergeant. But the thing is, you got caught, didn't yes, you? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, Sergeant. Now, do you think you've got any friends in section? Yes, Sergeant. So if I release you now, do you think they're going to come down and give you a hand, get all your kit back up there? Yes, Sergeant. What do you think? Yes, Shall I release you? Yes, please, Sergeant. I release you. When I say go out there, back up there, grab some of your mates and get this locked away, carry on your training and be a good soldier. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant. But back in the billet, Harkin finds himself isolated. It's Jobber Andrews who finally approaches him. One thing that might help you is if you apologise to the section at least. This is just something that shot up in my head because a lot of people are angry with you. And you can imagine why. Mm -hmm. So, um,. You just stand up, hold your hands up and say, sorry guys. They might have a little bit more respect for you, because at the moment, they ain't got much for you. Just never thought about it, the consequences of it. But it's a, it's a bad thing in the army, really. Still, so. Old habits stay young. The daily grind of national service continues unabated. Clean the walls, clean the windows, don't stand around idle. Nobody should be doing nothing. I want it cleaned, I want it tidied. Once again, Kiprianu fails to put his back into it. Come on, Kip. Don't I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, man. No. You're doing that, you're doing that, mate. You're doing that. Just get out the way, get out the way. Fuck, you know. See, look, you're fucking blowing it everywhere. You do it, man. I am doing it. You don't do anything properly. Whatever. I don't give a shit, man. No, you don't. You know that. It's from the start. You don't give a shit. Yes, yeah, so I get rid of that's me, why, that's get rid Well, of go me. then. Get I'd love to see you go. Get him to I'd love to see you go. You don't want to drag our section down. You're an idle piece of shit. Home, Do me a favour, innit? Get him to send me home. Cabriano, why is your name constantly coming up? People have my name. That was funny, Cabriano. Cabriano, come here. That is what fucking people think of you. <laughs> if Cipriano is going to pass out, he's got a long way to go. Get out of parade now. Just get out as you are. Come on, get out. Light fingered Harkin has yet to be reconciled with the platoon. He asked Sergeant Ray if he can address the lads. Harkin, come here. There's one thing in the army, one thing in the army, and we do live by it. We pay our dues, we do. 
when we commit an offence and we forgive and we forget. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Mark can, on his own volition, not being forced, has requested that he address the platoon. Harkin, away you go. Sorry, lad, for letting me down and nicking them. Like, everyone, I think everyone thought that they would, would, if they could, they would get away with it. But then he didn't. He's actually fought and about the consequences after. But I never reacted about that and just took it. But I'm sorry and hopefully he could all forgive me. But well, of course yeah, no yeah, problem, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I apologise for it anyway. So. Oh, well done. Well, Thanks. Thanks, lad. Okay, let's carry up. Make it tight. Oh, Next time on Bad Lads Army, the lads go to war. Harkin is caught lying again. You're a thieving, cheating, lying scum. And sparks fly when Kiprianu returns to his section. Come on, mate. Fuck him. I'll stick with you. Come on. Following filmmaker Chris Terrell as he trains to become the oldest man to complete the Royal Marines training programme. The 55-year-old commando is our pick of the day at 9 tomorrow. Up next, the illuminations are switched on in Blackpool and it's going to be a long night. Bouncers is on the way.